I remember I was like, why is he throwing hot dogs? They're so good. Now, interestingly no, <laughs> enough, Star Wars touched me in a different way. Oh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you're going to let the Force touch you, hon, um, <laughs> might no, as well. <laughs> no, but in all honesty, though, it touched me in a different way because I, you know, I didn't, I wasn't around when, um, a New Hope originally came out in 77 or any... Uh, I wasn't either. i am never said you yet. were. I'm not trying to <laughs> age you or nothing. Gosh. I'm just... I wasn't quite around, not quite yet. Um, You know, I wasn't around, of course, when the sequels came out and uh, nothing like that, but... Um, oh, I was. <laughs> when, when I first saw uh, Star Wars, I had no idea what it was, and it came on... Uh, uh, LA channel they don't have it anymore but UPN 13 and okay. I had no idea what was happening but I remember seeing the X-Wing for the first time I was like whoa Ooh. and it came on again and then it was like wow and it took me to a place I've never been to as a young really young kid and you know it was like wow this is so cool and the imagination the spaceship side and, yes and um it had like a super huge influence on me. That's actually why I started to really get into writing and storytelling and stuff. It was because of Star Wars. Like it was just, it literally took me on an adventure and I was like, I could do that. And I wanted to mm. make stories and take people on adventures. It was just right. so cool. And, um, and then the other big influence it took a little bit longer for this one to happen because i didn't know all the background stuff but walt disney mm. you know not disney itself not this modern disney they could fall off a cliff and suck a lemon but walt disney when disney was actually disney when they cared when when they wanted to be the happiest place on earth and not the richest right um, <laughs> the happiest place in the world. Yes. Walt Disney has such a giant influence. His story, his mannerisms. Like, I love the guy. But he, he'd call you a commie so fast. <laughs> what? He? Yeah, like, if if you crossed him and he didn't like you or, or oh, something wow. and he felt betrayed, he would call you a commie. Like, you freaking commie! Really? That's pretty interesting. And he hated unions, which I don't really care for unions myself. Probably shouldn't say that, but I don't. I'm sorry. Um, but he absolutely hated unions. He'd call all of them commies. And, uh, That's but the, funny. The thing is, though, with Walt Disney, because he wasn't a very vocal person, he wouldn't say, good job, buddy, yeah. And he was actually kind of shy, believe it or not. You almost said that in a Mickey Mouse way. It's like, was that on purpose? <laughs> no, it was not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so he was a very different type of personality in his own way. Yeah. In his he, own right. You know, you had a couple of different versions of Walt. Uh, you had, of course, Walt Disney. And then you had Walt Disney, the businessman. And the right. creator. And I, I kind of understand. I get where he's coming from, from a creative perspective and how he was. Because when you're a creator you see things that other people can't see and then uh -huh. if that's interesting yes if you're like me and you're limited in how you can explain stuff and you can't draw oh boy <laughs> you're in for a rough time um well and that's like my mom is that way and i see i sound more like you when it comes to this because i'm like oh i i try to see how she does but like i always tease i can't hang a picture frame let, well, I can hang, if I really take my time and I really work on it, I can hang it level. But then I'm going to look, I'm like, well, why would I put it there? That just looks dumb. My mom can hang like two different little pictures together and make it, I mean, well, we're, you know, where I work now, um, she used to be an interior decorator there. They had one interior decorator because, you know, the state for the clients where I work, they wanted it to feel more like a home. They wanted it to, to look um, great. Yeah. It had to look um, up to standards when state came down and looked at everything. Did this look like an actual home or does this look like an institution? Because even though it is an institution, we don't want it to look like one. I understand that, I guess. Um, you know, because it is considered, it is kind of like a, it's, <laughs> I want to call it a prison without the bars. Um, so, 
It, it did. They got their pictures. They got to kind of, if they liked Michael Jackson, they got to have Michael Jackson posters, and my mom would have somebody frame they would frame it and it would look amazing but she would she could make it you know what i mean it's like when you said see that vision my mom could like see a room how she wanted it how she had it planned out in her head and you're like but this is the ugliest crap in the world how i was like how are you like i remember just like how did you i go in there after she had done one and i had already seen it before she'd show me what she i'm like oh my god she is crazy i don't and and I go in there. I'm like, oh my god, I'm floored. She's like, why? I'm like, she's you don't like. I said, no, I love it. I was like, I just, I thought it was gonna look like shit. And now I don't have nothing to complain about <laughs> because she did. She made um, like for the calming rooms, you know, where they would take them if they're having an, um, I guess you'd say a moment, a special moment. Um, if they're fucking ripping. Um, things off the walls and breaking two thousand dollar tvs and uh, game stations and and so forth um to calm them down we'll take them to what they call a calming room can't lock them in it's not like you have a padded room they don't do that here where i'm at at all anymore um it is very <laughs> i almost call it um what is it um, animal for uh, cruelty free <laughs> oh okay um, um, like it a, is, yeah. yeah, it almost sounds like an animal type thing, but it is cruelty free. They, they even, they quit um, taking them down into like those um, holds to where restraint holds. Mm -hmm. That's not done anymore. They use what they call a kiru, um, which is like, if you're going to hit me, I'm going to use this, um, this fluffy shield and block your blow. <laughs> it's so stupid, man, because these... It's like we're supposed to train them for life out of our facility, and I don't think that that's training them properly because you can't hit somebody and expect them not to hit you back in the yeah. real world. Let's just be honest, dude. Um, but, I mean, it's kind of like how I was raised. We were raised the same way that the state's trying to do for these people that it's not going to be beneficial to me. In my opinion, it's not going to be beneficial later. But I, I understand that they don't want these people hurt. That's completely cool. But I remember the calming room she did one that was a jungle scene and if you've ever seen rainforest cafe where they have the giant um butterflies that are flapping they're mechanical and they flap their wings um she took an old and made it almost like a hot tub but she took this water she made an indoor waterfall melvin <laughs> and had like this lion this this um anima animate um animated what is it called? Not animated. Well, what animatronic? With a motorized. Anim yes, it was like animatronic, but it wasn't real big. She found all this stuff with reasonable prices, where most people um, on a decent budget could do this. Um, and I'm like, look, I go in there, and there's this tiger hanging up in this branch that she kind of coming out of the wall, where it looked like the, you know, it was part of it. I, I, I thought I was. I said, I want to live in this room forever. <laughs> And I said, this is so amazing. No wonder this is. And um, I, sadly, they took that calming room down. And now they're just. I, <laughs> the calming rooms now, honestly, make, would make me want to have a fit. But oh, whatever. Well, um, the other one was a. Oh, you would have loved this one, Mel. This The other one was a space room. You walked in there and it was like. I started laughing. I said, I, I was like, I've never had acid, but I feel like I took some. Because you walked in there and the way she had the. Um, she got those lights that have the galaxy and it kind of spins around and goes around. And oh. she had one of the lights that did the um, constellations and stuff, right? Okay, so I think and she found, had this um, Niamh's new room. Uh, oh, she would love that, wouldn't she? <laughs> yeah, so she does the the shrooms too. The oh yeah. Oh oh, you would have. Well, she might have to be careful in this one because, like, I'm telling you. I had never even tried anything like that at this point in my life. You when I first walked in there point. after, <laughs> well, I have now. I'm not gonna lie, but um, she even took the little tiny stars and she took little pieces of like, almost like I would say like um, they kind of look like rhinestones, but they didn't have the blingy bling look. They were more like mirrored. And she took them and she did them high up, and they looked like stars when the lights were out, and you had these other lights on. Her friend, um, that was the artist that could paint and do murals, did this alien that was a badass and glow in the dark paint. <laughs> it was so neat, Mel. I wish she had pictures of it. Um, this room, when you walked in there, 
just the way she had it set up um, with the black lights and all these different lightings um, in there. If, yeah, I, I'm going to say I walked funny when I was in there because I felt like the, um, it, it made you literally have that where the illusion were um, your, what's it called? Your, what's it called? Off, is off. Your, your equilibrium. Yes, it did. So I kind of had this whole space floaty feeling, and it was amazing. So, yeah, and the Emma needs to go for this one because it was, oh, it was so cool. Yeah, it was so, awesome. that it was cal- it was very calming for me because, well, now I see why. I loved that one. That was my probably my very, very favorite. I did like the jungle, though, too. She had several different ones, but those were the ones that really stood out. Um, and if you would have asked me to do something like that that could calm people, I would have never thought of all that and how she figured to give you the feeling like you are in space. My mother created that. She, I, I'm going to say pretty much without a doubt my mom's never been to space because she just, she is not one of those that wants to even, you know. Yeah. When it comes to 9-11, she wants to believe that, you know, the government never did anything wrong and that we're perfectly safe in, in any president's arms. Well, because, you know, the government would never do this. Well. <laughs> Let me tell you, though, and I start laughing. It's like, oh, you're cute. I said, how do you do that? How do you make yourself believe that? She's, I just don't want. And she told me one day, she was, I, I, I would go crazy if I let myself believe anything else. She knows. So it's like, I feel like she does know. Just it's like to accept it. Oh, she is so good at the bubble. I keep. I was like, "How do you do your bubble?" She said, "Because if I came out of my bubble, she said I'd probably lose my stuff." You know, my, and she would, because she's probably even more. Um, what would I say? Innocent than you, more innocent than other than having children. So she's, you know, you know, she's. Uh, she's. Um, she's my mom is very vanilla. None. We'll she's a border, she's very vanilla yes and I've never she's never smoked a cigarette not in her life well i don't um, think that's too uncommon well actually now yeah. that i think about it for the decade huh yes well i mean like <laughs> she had marijuana but that is not because she chose to it's because i made <laughs> So good, I'm gonna sound like a horrible person. Okay, well now I'm not gonna eat whatever you cook. So <laughs> <laughs> right there, that I would just, never suggest that in the first place. You know, no, that I'll just too cemented much. everything. Well, you know, I might have slipped her a pot brownie. Like, what? No, I did. Oh my god! It was god. so cute. She said, "She goes, ha! Why am I giggling so much?" She's gosh, that she is. The first time she'd taste, she'd, ooh, that chocolate taste, that brownie tastes funny. And I'm like, I'm like trying to not lose it because, you know, you, it's really hard to make any kind of edible where you don't taste the pot. Now, I've, there is several that I've had that it's like, where, what? Um, there are some that you can get that you can't hardly taste it at all. You can't taste that earthiness. You know, I, and that's I the only way to explain it. I feel like we it. should put up a legal disclaimer or something right now. Oh, I, I, um, hold on. There, okay, so for my Texas mates, um, I have eaten, um, what's it, hemp brownies. <laughs> um, and I love hemp. Hemp is great. Hemp is good. Hemp, hemp, hemp is the word, guys. It's always considered hemp, and you're completely safe. Just saying. In Texas, that is. Serious? Nope. They fucked up when they did the <laughs> they did the laws. This, uh, I'm sure they're going to catch it and fix it, but for right now, as long as it's hemp, you're good to go. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm. I'm no. I was told this by a sheriff's officer. Oh, well, we know what he's up to, don't we? No, no, no. It's a friend of a friend and a friend. And oh, they're yeah, just, sure. A friend of a friend. They're kind of groovy. They're kind of groovy. <laughs> so. Like I said, I'm not eating what you're cooking now. Forget Oh, that. well, damn it. I, but no, that's, my mom has experienced pot brownies, but that was because her daughter is an asshole. That's so jacked. Oh, it was so cute, too, too, because it was like watching, I mean, it's like watching the most innocent person um, actually kind of allow themselves to be carefree. 
And it was like, oh, why am I giggling so much? Oh, that, uh, she goes, I want some more of that chocolate. I'm like, oh, my God, you really don't need it Because <laughs> at that moment, I realized, uh-oh. You know, it didn't take much, you know. And um, it's not the type of chocolate that you can eat tons of if you get my drift. Yeah, this isn't some dough. You'll chocolate. be a very sick. No, this is the type, like I told you, my experience on the plane where I thought, we were going to crash, and I was coming home from, you know, one of the live sci-fi things, and it was, <laughs> I thought I was going to crash and die. I called Tim and said, Tim, tell my kids I love them. <laughs> because I'd ate too much of it. Yeah. Never, it, never, it, never, 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 never eat too much. It edibles. rocked your world. <laughs> Dude, I am, at that moment, it was like one of those weird, silly moments where people are like, I will never smoke or do this again. I knew that wasn't going to be for real, but at that time, I haven't done an edible since. I will say that much. I have not done an edible since <laughs> because it will hit you hardcore. And I had waited the proper amount of time where most people wait. And this one snuck up and bit me in my ass. I'll be honest. I thought I was pretty hardcore. It made me feel like I was a weakling that had never done anything negative in my life. And it was start, I started laughing. I said, okay. I just, it was a little bit more um, potent than I got. And later I did find out that it was probably more like it, when you do chocolate, because I ate a chocolate bar, that you're not sure where all the potency, pots, how would you say that? Potency? Yeah, that's how you would say it. It sounded weird to me, though, that potency would go, and it was like that last little bit, but it was all in that one little bite, and it hit me hard once it hit. Oof. Scary moment, man. <laughs> I'm not playing. It terrified me. Lesson learned, I hope. Oh, man. It, least, it really did. To a certain I will extent. never eat a whole one. I will never eat a whole bar alone by myself thinking that it's not going to kick my ass because it totally kicked my ass. Dude. So, there we go, from Disney to freaking pot brownie edible thing. You Hold on! Yours. Disney, and yes, I think that that's very, it works well together, because, come on, how could he, he was very creative. He was creative, but he didn't do any type of anything. Uh, psycho You don't think? No, I don't do any psycho actors. I like to think I'm somewhat creative. No, you are. No, you are, but you don't think that... Disney ever did? No, I, I don't think so. His biggest thing was he, if you made him upset, he'd call you a commie, and uh, <laughs> I love it. He had a way of rewarding you. Like he didn't exactly just say, "Hey, good job, buddy." He would make sure you had a bigger paycheck than normal. You know? Oh wow! Oh yeah, he was. I want a boss like him. Yeah, if you were on his good side and you actually did the work and everything, and not complained or uh -huh. questioned, he was he was cool with it. But, uh, yeah, you know, he even, when he was getting ready to check on the progress of the animations or whatever, because he was somewhat of a shy guy and he didn't want people to be caught doing something stupid, he would always cough and clear oh. his throat. So he'd always make his presence known, just, <clears throat> <clears throat> you know. and Really? It's like, I don't want to hear you talking bad about me. Yeah, so it was just like, here's a warning. He would do it every time uh, the animators would say, <laughs> and he would... Enter in, you know. So yeah, I, I don't. Think, I like that. I don't think he did. Um, I don't think he did any any drugs or nothing like that. I don't think he smoked weed. I don't think he did shrooms, LSD, acid, whatever. What about something. George Lucas? <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure he did. He went to USC. Oh, I know okay. he did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering, was, because you know. Um, very both um very kind of out there people within their own i guess in their own right yeah. um so what do you think about okay now and I, I i had somebody tell me this recently because you you know a lot about the whole disney thing because you're kind of a, a disney um i would what would you say guru <laughs> oh i'm not no not a guru i'm just a big fan well of okay. Disney from oh Disney okay from see the this 60s is where I'm going to the 1990 till 1999 basically you would like my friend a lot because it was like you know Disney has just really well my friend was complaining and I said like I remember it's like 
And I was like, no, no, Fantasia was pretty cool. But it's like Disney does not have their own. They're not creative. They don't, you know, it's like, do they always have to go? Even they're like, okay, Snow White. That was a um, fairy tale. I, I don't know if it was a Grimm's. But they took a lot of their fairy tales from the Grimm's brothers or yeah, whatnot. Yeah, they, they retold stories and they made them friendlier. Yes. Yeah, they, they PG'd them. And, you know, and I, I guess I understand because some of the story, like the Pinocchio. You know, if... <laughs> yeah. Well, hold on. Why did you laugh like that? Because the original Pinocchio was a freaking was killer. <laughs> it was what? He was a murderer. He killed people. It was. It was. See who and how many people I think wonder know that. I I don't know, but if you look up the original Italian, the horde. A lot of them are not fairy tales. I mean, I would if I. <laughs> it's thought of fairies in that light, I'd be terrified. I would never want to see a fairy in my life. I mean, because I would associate it with fairy tales. Oh, well, that's straight <laughs> nightmare type material. But yeah, like um, what <sighs> Hansel and Gretel is terrifying enough as it is. And they, you know, in a lot of stories nowadays, they've doped it down. Um, what was the other one? Snow White was pretty. Uh, they definitely. You know what? Actually, I think Snow White is one of the few that it's not as bad as it could have been. I mean, yeah, okay. So the the worst things was that the hunter killed an animal and literally took out his heart. Mm -hmm. That that was pretty bad. But for the most part, Snow White as a story as a whole, it's not too bad. I mean, um, it was pretty tame. It was yeah, tame. Yeah, I okay. mean, the witch she actually poisoned Snow White two times, like the first time. Uh, the mm -hmm. dwarves were able to revive her, and then the second time, though, that's mm -hmm. when she ate the apple. It wasn't a poison apple. So she had, she kind of OD'd. Yeah, it, 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 it wasn't a poison apple, exactly. It was an apple lodged in her throat, and it caused her to pass out, I guess. And <laughs> I'm sorry, so she had a Melinda moment? You know, I haven't mentioned She her. choked on a hot dog. She <laughs> choked on a hot dog. <laughs> Yeah, she's sorry. On I hate that lady. And I, I'm sorry. I don't hate, hate this very strong word. I don't, I loathe her. <laughs> I like the word loathe in any way because it sounds better than hate to me. It sounds really way more horrid. I don't like the woman. It's like, you know, she is an I person. Kali's going to kick her ass, let's just say. <laughs> 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 let's just say she's going to enjoy Kali so much. You know, in that astral fuck, fuck world that she likes to have. And normally this is where I would give you a little update on Melinda and stuff. But I haven't been following her. I don't know what she's up to. Okay. Me and NGK. Woo! So, Yay. I, I don't know. I, yeah, I'm out of the loop. Uh, I'm so glad. I'm that woman to... lost her mind and you finally saw it. I'm yeah. like, oh, Mel yeah. She, she legit Mel off the deep end to where uh -uh. it's like, okay, this is no longer entertaining. This is just sad. I'm done. And I hope that nobody for their own, um, serious, for their own safety, never reads one of her books. Like, I think it's quite funny and torturous that you even... What did you say? You said, was it Benny, that he could not... No, okay. Not. So, the the book that I reviewed, Demons and Familiars, that was given to me by Angie Kay. And both of us, we couldn't have known it would, it would be as bad as it was. <laughs> I'm sorry, so, I don't mean to giggle, but it's great. Just but, listen to the... Because I remember you called me up and you'd read it to make me listen. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, Bye. <laughs> yeah, I'd send you a couple of snaps of it and everything. And, you know, to just sum up what I said in the review, and this is no fault of Angie. She didn't know, and I do want to, I'm to the point where I'm like, I'm going to give her her money back because... You feel guilty. Feel you feel so wrong. Um, no, she offered to do it. She would not take your money anyway. You know that. But uh, what I, pretty much, this is what I said in closing in the review, and maybe it's a little mean. I don't care at this point. But I love it. I, I, I said that the book is better than getting your eyes gouged out by sharp daggers, but <laughs> not quite as good as watching paint dry. So and like I'm a painter, so I know <laughs> what that is like, and I would agree. Uh, no, it, I would agree. I would then listen, even to listen to that woman um, for five minutes. I'm like, I can sit here in this 
room, watch the paint dry for an hour. If I if I had to choose between five minutes of listening to her and because I have to take anything I've watched of hers in like two minute increments in yeah. or whatever. No, because her she's one of those people for me. And I might, because I have a very Texan accent, I could probably have an accent that drives people fucking nuts, I'm sure. But hers is that whiny, that, I'm sorry, the B word, the cunt word, oops, I that didn't help, did it? No. Well, no, it did not, so whatever, <laughs> it's unedited anyway, so there we go. Yay! Let your potty mouth fly. Um, no, um... Mm. God, I was so when when Angie kept, when Angie was she was like oh that woman I'm like girl oh you and me both I was just glad that I had somebody that has actually paid attention to, to her and and just could not understand where you were trying to give this person another chance it's like proof Mel that you really do care and you try to like a person. And, and you will give them chance after chance. Because <laughs> she is hard to deal and to watch. And I don't know how she has so many followers. And it's so sad that there's people out there asking her for help. And I want to just, like, on every one of them. And, of course, I, I don't open that door because I would have myself crazy with dead people by the end of the day if yeah, I did. you don't want that. No, because, like, right now, my friend that I've... And I didn't realize that any of the psychics that I've um, asked to help me with my friend's case, you know, the one that supposedly killed mm -hmm. himself. Well, he's, like I told you before, he has a very ADD type personality. And he, even still now, because, you know, you don't change. Like I've said a million times, my mom had it happened to her the other night she was like she prayed about it she goes you know because my mom's very christian she was like scared to kind of dip into that side of her and i said well you dream so if maybe he can come to you while you sleep or whatnot but you know she prayed about it and if it's meant for her to take a message or get messages then she, you know she was going to accept that she's barney at three o'clock he's like i'm you know and she said i felt him and it was like she was, okay, she was trying to figure out his name. So she was like, okay, you know, she was wanting to say, okay, Chris. She's like, okay, Brandon. She was trying to think of his name, and he was like, Chris, <laughs> like that in her face. And she was, okay. <laughs> she said, Bonnie, he, he, like, he lunges at you when he's talking. She's like, I couldn't see him, but I could feel him. I said, yeah, welcome to my world. And she said, how do you, I said, how do I do it? Like half people probably think I'm insane. That's how you do it. You just do it because you know what? You, you at the end of the day, you realize you are helping. Um, other people might just not be aware of how you're helping because it's not on this spiritual side of things. But um, he, you remember me telling you the key? I, I told you about the key. And actually, guys, anybody that's with, uh, I know we've talked about this a couple of times, but my friend that supposedly, um, committed suicide um i knew immediately he did not um patty negri from this she's been on ghost adventures a few times mm -hmm. along with um goodness uh, sheila um she's on she's friends with patty very good friends with patty her name is sheila i'll have to look up later but um sheena sheena metal s-h-e-n-n-a sheena metal um and she's on facebook and she's really good if you know, add her people because she's really cool to watch her stuff, her live streams and so forth. But I called in and I didn't say anything other than, and they actually took my call and they said, I told them, I said, I needed to know about my friend that committed. And I said, committed suicide. She said, he didn't commit suicide was the first thing that came out of her mouth. My stomach sunk because I knew at that moment, everything that I saw that he had showed me was correct i wasn't losing my mind because i just lost a friend um he was coming to me and it, it was so strong and um i stan i had stan sent her pictures of him i didn't let her know who it was and she you know she, the whole where you felt like somebody's drugging you that happened to her um, and that's kind of what they had said on um, Sheena and the Patty, Patty Negri's um, little 
podcast thing they do. And they pretty much said the same thing, both of them, and I blindly um, went to them with this. Well, I also, on one of where my mentor does his psychic um, kind of group on Facebook, which is um, zero to, or ZTP, um, it's a ZTP group, um, anyway, on his group, I mentioned it. And I put posted up pictures of him because that's the best way when it comes with Chris is to get into his energy is to kind of look at him. And this one woman finally messaged me privately um, not too long ago. She was just, are there any updates? She said, his energy comes at me so hardcore, I don't know what to do. She said, I've dealt with this for a long time. She said, I don't know. Can you please give me, you know, she asked for help and I am. You know, and actually, it's kind of one of the things I give under I different types of um, you know tools or just methods of <laughs> trying to solve. Like she mentioned, she has children, and she's trying to be a proper mother at the same time of these emotions flooding over you to where you feel like, okay, I wasn't depressed five minutes ago, but I'm super freaking depressed right now. First of all, you got to figure out where it's coming from. If it's yours, if it's yours, accept it, deal with it, move on. If it's somebody else's, for me, I have to hunt the fucker down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, wow. Well, and I don't mean it to sound ugly, but no, because if it's somebody that I know that's going, then they're living and it's something they're going through. If I find them and, and maybe they're having a really low moment, I've had this happen where I basically message them at the right time that they need somebody very terribly, you know, very badly. Um, and when I messaged them and realized it was them and made them feel better, talked to them for a little bit. Dude, I felt, I felt that, that horrible feeling of um, depression and whatever that was hitting me. It went away. So I've learned ways to cope, um, but you don't always have that time. Like, and I told her that. I said, you know, whatever energy it is, whether it's living or um, not living, you ask it, please step back. You're overwhelming me and I cannot help anything or anybody that is overwhelming me because I can't focus and try that. You know, there's nothing I could do. So you have to step back and give me some space. And I told her different ways to kind of work and deal, but she, but I told her, I, I apologize. I said, I, I love Chris. I will always love him forever. Love him. He's one of the best people I've met in my entire life. But his energy is, he's adamant about his, he doesn't want his children to think that he did this to himself. And um, he, you know, and I think he also is very much so wanting his family to get the um, justice and himself, the justice that he needs. Um, I found the key. So he had showed me pictures of different things that had happened that evening. Um, the Probably the most recent update I have is I kept seeing him hide a key or like an envelope and um and it was like in a throwaway drawer where you know you everybody has that knickknack drawer or the throw all catch all drawer at yeah. home well i saw him hide this key in there because of course it's going to be perfectly masked in a drawer like that um but i finally met or not met but i talked to his mother on the phone and we talked for quite a while and she's a lovely lady you know, she thanked me for being a good friend to him and so forth. And I'm like, no, I think really, ma'am, I said, you raised an amazing son. And I thank you for him, <laughs> you know, because he was a blessing in so many ways. Um, because I don't feel like I deserve any kind of a, like a reward. He was, he really helped me when I needed it too. So it was like a very balanced friendship. Anyway, well, I told her to look for this key. And I sent a picture of it to you too, Mel. Um, she had, a, she finds this key that she's like, we don't know where, who this is or where it goes to. I'm like, I told you where it is. You know, I said, like, well, I told you where it came from. I said, now it's the fun part is trying to figure out where the fuck it goes. <laughs> because we, you know, I, and this is the part that it's like literally I'm having to be a detective or an FBI agent which is kind of fun, you know, you get to be a pretend FBI agent, but you don't have quite all the tools that you need. It's like, well, we'll give you the, like, really dumbed-down version of it. So I don't have access to, is it the, um, is it a post office box? Is it a box that may be, like, you know, USPS or FedEx? Or, um, it's a shit. I mean, it could be just 
Um, I had one person say that it looked a little bit like a, God, was it like a firebox? Um, and the number, so that is helping. There's a number on it. I think it's like 4,000 or 5,000 something. But either way, it's like when you go into a post office place, the good thing is they can tell you, well, our no keys don't go that high. But so she's been to several places. So she is looking where this Kiga belongs to because I feel like it's going to have um, papers in it that are going to basically tell his story of what happened and what he knew was going on before he um, was shot. Because I didn't know a lot of things that had happened that was going on. Um, I okay. This is going to be quite interesting to you, Mel, because there's an update on it that I. I'm still kind of like, whoa. Um, when It was this time last year, actually, that I had talked to him, and he was going through that bad time. He was going to, you know, planning on divorcing his wife. And he was telling me, he's like, you know, he was just stressed out about a lot of things. You know, he felt, you know, it was like, I think his third marriage. You know, he was not happy camper. And I can understand, you know. I've been there. I've been, had disappointment and all that. Well, but he was okay. Got off the phone. He was actually looking, trying to be positive. And he knew that he could call me if he needed at any time, no matter how low he felt. So, um, the next day he calls, and he was having a bad day. He said, Bonnie, he said, I don't know what's wrong. I'm, and he literally says, I'm pissing blood. I said, you take your fucking ass to the hospital right now. If you don't, I don't know your mom, but I will figure out who she is and I will call her. Um, and I said, I will drive myself up there and your wife is not going to be happy about it. And, you know, we're, I will just, guess what? Deal with me, bitch. Because <laughs> I, I, I was worried when he, well, when he was saying that he, I, because he is not a person that complained about even headaches. So when he was telling me this happened, it scared me. Yeah. And I talked to his mother and his mother told me that he had never ever had any kind of problems like this she said but once he married her he started having these bouts of pissing blood where he was going so he had gone that wasn't like the first time he had been having this happen well so you know me i've watched too many id channel shows because to me that doesn't make sense why would a perfectly healthy male that never really is sick doesn't miss work start pissing blood Okay, so what can cause these problems? Well, they found out it was pancreas or whatever, the pancreatitis type of thing. Okay, well, what can cause random spouts of, bouts of fucking pancreatitis? Well, if you're taking too much, okay, so he would admittedly admit that he was an alcoholic and he liked to drink. And he was working on it, but he still had that, that was his thing. His wife knew this when she married him. Now, if you give them too many of their benzos, because you're going through stress because you're living with a woman that's a cunt. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, Mel, somebody, I don't want to point fingers, but, well, you know, whatever. I'm not, a, I'm not, you know, I can't say that I'm a fucking um, uh, investigator or whatever, but somebody, I feel like, was giving him too much of his medicines and I think they were adding it to his alcohol because they knew he would drink that and not you know it's not like you're gonna you can't sniff some fucking appeal if it's been crushed up and put into an alcohol into a glass of alcohol or whatnot I'm telling you because she said that when they did his now they did do and I was another thing that I remember asking the um, mother or the the sister actually first when I first talked to her because she was wanting me to tell her everything that I saw imaged of you know that he was giving me pictures of i said i did see that they were somebody put something in a drink i saw that um it made him dizzy and out of it so that whoever did what they did could do what they did you know where it means being shot you know they basically had him where he couldn't defend himself properly oh my gosh. yeah and this is you gotta talk i mean i love him to death but he was a hardcore maga Fan. I don't think he had a red hat, but he would have if he uh, could have. <laughs> not everyone's perfect. No, but in so many, but it's, but it was because he was very naive to so many things. In my opinion, I love him. He was a good person. Other than that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there were, you know, our whole spirituality and everything was so different. But we, he, 
he cared about me in a way that to me was unconditional and then it came from a pure place and that's what I will never ever in my life forget 